Uh, my name is John Murphy. I am a technical director with Riverbed. Uh, I have been specializing in network security. Um, I have I started off actually in robotics and then moved into network security using machine learning techniques, uh, specifically with NetFlow, uh, to detect malicious insiders, to detect uh, botnets and other problems. And for the last decade or so, I've been helping Riverbed's customers um, and lots of folks uh, use flows to find security problems like uh, crypto miners. Whoops. Uh, so what I'm going to be using here is a tool called NetProfiler. Uh, NetProfiler is a uh, flow analysis uh, product where we are taking a uh, flow. Uh, NetFlow is a often described as a phone bill for your network. Um, I, I think at this point, more people know what NetFlow is than phone bills. Uh, <laughs> I feel a little old sometimes making that analogy, but it is a really useful one. So while we do have products that are looking at individual packets, very often, all we really need to know is who, who is communicating with whom at what time, and just how much data is passing back and forth. We don't actually need to go down to the individual packets or make a very expensive data request for every single uh, thing that we're looking for. And we can make use of deep packet inspection at the flow generation level to pass up information about application uh, that we can use in our investigations. So we can get this data from a very wide variety of devices, uh, such as routers, uh, switches, firewalls. Uh, we can also get flow-like data from AWS and Azure in, in terms of flow logs. And we bring it all into a central monitoring infrastructure, um, that profiler, which allows us to get that global view in a single pane of glass so that we can actually slice and dice this in a variety of different ways. And because the NetFlow format is very compact, we can store everything at full fidelity, meaning that when I am going in, I can zoom way out and I can see you know, the, the bytes per second for my whole network, either right now or going back over a month or so, however long I've got disk for it. Or I can drill down uh, to very, very specific uh, filters and pull out a single DNS request out of all of that going back again, months. And so this is useful for a very wide variety of techniques, but for me, this is a great data source for uh, security forensics. Because uh, when John comes to me and says, hey, I see evidence of a crypto miner, I am able to go back and look at the traffic uh, that's actually being passed, regardless of whatever the hacker has done to the host itself. They may have turned off logging, they may be faking logs or, or other telemetry, but they can't fake the network data. And I've got all of it. So I'm able to go in, which I'll do in just a minute, and actually pull up what has been happening. In addition, you know, that's very manual. Uh, we do also have a variety of alerting uh, capabilities. A lot of it is geared toward network performance, but there's also a fair bit geared toward security. Uh, and that'll come into play here in a little bit too. So I think it's about time that I dive into the actual demo. John, I, I just want to make sure I understand. So this is an on-premises NetFlow collector that runs on a on a custom virtual appliance, or or what does that look like? So this is going to be um, it's going to be deployed on-prem. Um, typically, it's going to be an appliance. Uh, you can also put in gateway appliances to collect flows anywhere your network happens to be, or virtual um, network happens to be so that you're able to collect that, compress it, and securely send it to that central location for analysis. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking at here is my profiler dashboard. Now, everybody is going to have their own sets of dashboards. Everybody has their own quirks, what they like to look at first thing in the morning. Me, I like to look at alerts first thing in the morning. Um, you can see we've got a handful of fun things. Uh, you can also see down there that we've got our threat feed. Uh, the advanced security module threat feed is a little bit like a blog. Uh, we are going out regularly and pulling in information 
from news sources, because as you all know, it, it, there's a lot going on. And very often, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go to Ars Technica, uh, which uh, will have information about today's new hack. Uh, unfortunately, by the time something gets into the news, these things have generally been going on for weeks or months. Uh, they will identify, for example, IP addresses or ports, uh, things that are very nicely uh, visible in flow data. But by the time it gets to me, again, it's in the past. This allows me to you know, go in and search all of my data for all of those indicators going back however long I want to, so that when I see a report, hey, back in March, this thing was a thing, I can go back in March. Today, however, I have a, uh, a little bit of an advantage, which is that John slacked me the internal IP for that JFK uh, uh, host. So I'm just going to type that in. And I'm going to pull up just a quick report here. Now, we've got a lot of information going back. So what this is going to do, just to start off, I want to see what's going on with that host that may or may not have been reported into other tools. So now you can kind of see here, we're not looking at a lot of traffic on this host. You know, what is that? 80 kilobits per second. Um, you know, the, this, the traffic that it's serving up is not all that much. Uh, let's see. So what is it connecting out with? So I'm, you know, I'm mostly seeing web traffic, Google, Microsoft. Oh, okay. So um, what we've got here is Monero which uh, is indeed a uh, cryptocurrency, not Bitcoin, but uh, related. Yeah, uh, so John, you, you had it right. Uh, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got a little bit of a security problem here. So at this point in the game, I kind of need to figure out how big that is. Now, I believe he said that he's already seen three users uh, mentioned. I'm going to, well, first, let me see how, uh, let me just, isolate this traffic. You can see here, by the way, I have a lot of options for pivoting. Once I've identified a port and a host, I can break this down by dozens of different ways to get very slightly different views of the traffic and investigate according to what is specifically interesting. Now, I'm in this for security, so I'm not really going to be looking into DSCP or QoS or BGP, but host pairs by ports, uh, this is a really useful one for me. Now, again, we're not looking at a lot of traffic. If you look at that, you know, we've got a max of about 400 bits per second. Uh, this is the sort of thing that flies under the radar very easily, uh, which is what our hacker friends are relying on. Now, let's zoom down here and see. Okay. So now, Having pivoted to the port, that lets me break it down more easily by both hosts involved. Remember my um, phone bill analogy, you know, it's telling me who is connecting to whom. And in this case, the whom is xmrpool.eu, off in France. So I'm going to pull up the host report for that. So you can see that the process of this is I am going in, I'm digging down, drilling down, and pivoting in a number of different ways. And so you can see, um, let's see, you know, we're, we're still talking 600 bits per second coming in. We are not looking at a lot of traffic here. These guys justifiably think that they're flying under our radar. And what we see here are, okay, so that first one is JFK. Um, those other ones, okay, so we've got four hosts involved here. That's, uh, okay, so I, I, I can take notes here and see, you know, I'm, as I'm going for each stage, I'm getting more information. So before I go on, though, like right now, I'm just looking at a short period of time. I want to find out how long this has been going on. So I'm going to just zoom out. I'm leaving all the filters as they are. And let's, so because this is full fidelity data, this can take a little while to go through. But can you imagine how long it would take to go through a week's worth of packets for a filter? 
I don't really need the information that's in the packets. All I really need to know is which of those needles in my haystack are marked xmrpool.edu. So let's give this a little more, oh, here we go. So it's been, let's see, uh, hang on. It's been going for, yeah, it's been going for at least a week. Let me, let me go a little earlier. Very easy to pan back and forth. Um, so this is, let's see. Okay, so it looks like this started around September 7th. That's very interesting. Uh, not least because watching John's presentation, it looked to me like the performance problems didn't happen for another couple of days after that. Okay, so yeah. So I think I'm going to, at this point, I'm going to pull in some additional information. So these are all the hosts that have been implicated. There's more of them than I thought. So now I've got some options here. I think now what I want to do is I'm going to dig into those security events. So throughout this whole time, all of the traffic that's been coming in has been matched against a number of different rules and machine learning techniques that are looking for, in my case, a number of different security related events. So I'm just gonna pivot and see what started. Now I clicked on, I think, uh, I forget which one, I think it was the JFK host. So that is going to be what I'm searching on here. And that didn't come up with anything, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to that filter because there's a couple things involved. Um, I don't actually remember the IP addresses. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's just go in. Sorry, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. So dot eight and yeah. So I don't, I don't need to, to filter on all of them. I just want to get a sense of what this is. Obviously I can fill in more than one or I can click the filter for there. So let's see what comes back when I do that. And let's see. So this is going back for, oh, okay. So yeah, this one is a little more interesting. So you can see here that we've got some flags from a number of different uh, security alerts. We have exfiltration alerts and blacklist alerts. We've got, okay, so some of these have been flagged as malware download locations. Some of these have been flagged as command and control. So for the exfiltration, you'll notice some of these are, are very short. Some of these are like three and a half hours, one's eight hours. The exfiltration alert is a little different than the way other folks do it. Um, because we are able to look at the individual sessions as they're going on, instead of looking at the traffic rates, we're able to track that network session over a much longer period of time. And we're able to tell when a total amount of data has been passed outside the network, regardless of how long it takes. So if somebody is again, trying to fly under our radar by going low and slow, then we can still pick it up. Now, I have this set up for a fairly low threshold. Uh, the idea being that I'm not gonna start my investigation with every single exfiltration, unless it goes over like a couple dozen gigabytes or, or a couple, uh, even a terabyte I can set it for. Um, this is primarily useful the way I'm doing it right now, where I can see in the context of an investigation, what else might be happening. You can see off on the right, it's showing me the destination. And that's not one of the hosts that has been on my radar so far. So I'm adding to my little list of all the things that I need to go into. Now, I'm going to have a look at, yeah, the command and control. So this is just telling me I've gone, uh, I, I've set up these blacklists um, and these are you know, known C2 servers that have been identified by, by one of a number of different vendors. And it has identified this particular host. Now this host, you know, I, I, I recognize that that is in um, uh, Azure, I believe. Now I have a bunch of different options here. Uh, Obviously, so far, I have been pivoting inside our product primarily, but I don't have to. You can see, for example, I can go down and I can pull packets for this host. I move over to app response and see exactly 
what that communication with that blacklisted host looked like. I can also go and I've got some external links set up here. Um, I can do a lookup, you know, very easily for that IP, go to SANS Internet Storm Center or McAfee Trusted Source. Uh, I thought I had Virus Total in here, but that's also a great one. I have a lot of options now for going in and just from this screen, finding out more information. Now, I obviously had a lot of work ahead of me uh, right now. I think I'm going to end it here. The reason I'm going to end it here is that I've learned a couple of important things. First, I've learned that this has been going on for more than a week. I have gathered a list of IP addresses inside my network that I believe to be compromised. Uh, and I have a variety of IP addresses outside my network that I need to investigate, either um, looking up in, in a, a third party service, looking up to see if there are known malware families using them, uh, and just simply uh, doing a search uh, engine for that is good. And of course, I can look it up in other tools. However, this has been going on for over a week, and the performance problems have not. On top of that, those list of IP addresses do not match the list of users that have been having problems, which means that while I have dug into this and I have made use of my full fidelity data to determine what the extent of the breach is, I'm pretty sure that this is, while it is a problem and it is potentially a big problem, it is not the problem. I think we're going to have to dig a little deeper and I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, Brandon, to uh, try a different tack.